hey guys, in this video we look at the particle model of matter for your LXL physics. Now if you want to follow me through as I go through the video, you can do that by using the free vision guide which is downloadable from my website. Solid particles are in a fixed position. They do vibrate, but very, very slightly, and it is around a fixed position. They do not move around. Liquid particles move around much more. They're still touching each other, but they're not in a fixed position. They are moving about randomly. It's still rather limited movement. It's still within a confined space. Unlike gas, which is free to move and zip around all over the place. If we're going to be putting energy in, then we are going to be turning a um, solid into a liquid or we are going to be evaporating a liquid into a gas. If energy is coming out of the system, a gas is going to be condensing or a liquid is going to be freezing. Density is the amount of mass in a set volume. So, mass in a set volume and this is the same for the equation and the equation for this is rho I know it looks like a lowercase p but it's not it's a lowercase rho equals mass over volume the units you need to know for this mass is measured in kilograms volume is measured in meters cubed and density is measured in kilograms per meters cubed Specific heat capacity is how much energy is needed to raise the temperature of one kilogram of a substance by one degree. Our equation for that is change in energy equals mass times specific heat capacity times change in temperature. Specific heat capacity is going to be particular to whatever substance they're talking about and they would tell you this. I wouldn't expect them to expect you to know this. Our units for energy are joules, our units for mass kilograms, our units of change in temperature are degrees C and specific heat capacity is joules per kilogram degrees C. There is not an extra per in here, that is a space in there. Specific latent heat is how much energy is needed to change a substance From a solid to a liquid at the melting point. And remember, if a substance is pure, it will change instantly at one temperature. The equation for this is energy equals mass times specific latent heat. Our units for this are going to be joules for energy, Ma mass is going to be measured in kilograms and specific latent heat is joules per kilogram. When we're looking at the collection of molecules in a system and the amount of energy they have, we are going to have two bell-shaped curves. At low temperatures, there are going to be more molecules that have less energy and few molecules that have high energy. Now, if we say that this point here is where molecules have enough energy to evaporate, then only these ones at low temperature can evaporate. However, at high temperature, more molecules have more energy. So there are still going to be some with a low temperature, but the majority of them are now going to have a high temperature, meaning more of them are going to have passed this threshold for evaporation. And the average kinetic energy is going to be the area under the graph. So as molecules evaporate, they're going to be leaving this section of the graph. So evaporation is actually going to lower the average kinetic energy of a system. 
In this video, I'm using a simulation from the excellent FET website. You can see here we have a closed container and I'm adding in gas here and we can see the pressure. As the pressure, in, as the more gas goes in, we can see the pressure is increasing. So it's stabilized. I'm going to add in lots more gas here and you can see the pressure is going to increase. So as the gas bumps against the walls of the container, it's exerting um, a small force, it's doing work on there and is going to be increasing the pressure in the system. If we want to work out the pressure in the system, that is volume times a constant, the constant you'll be told in the exam. Our units for pressure are pascals, our units for volume are metres cubed. Pressure 1 times volume 1 is going to be equal to pressure 2 times volume 2, where pressure is going to be measured in pascals and volume in metres cubed. You've probably heard of Celsius and Fahrenheit, well I'm going to add another one in Kelvin. At minus 273 degrees C, that is where we have zero Kelvin. At zero degrees C, we have 273 Kelvin, and at 100 degrees C, we have 373 Kelvin. To convert between Celsius and Kelvin, you just have to add on 273. 0 degrees Kelvin or minus 273 degrees Celsius is absolute zero, where there is none or so very little movement of particles in a solid that we cannot measure it.